Well, praise the Lord. Amen. Happy Resurrection Sunday. So glad you are in the house of God. Yeah, go ahead. Let's give God a, a hand clap. He's worthy this morning. I love seeing all these kids heading back to kids' church. Uh, God is doing something great today in 2024. And if you don't realize it, you will. <laughs> I know there's a lot of bad news going on and a lot of crazy things in the world, but our God is still on the throne. He, he reigns in majesty and glory. There's nothing that escapes his eye. He sees the very heart of each and every one of us this morning, and he cares about what you're going through. He knows you better than you know yourself. And so as, as I get ready today uh, to celebrate the risen Lord, uh, I, I want to introduce myself to those of you that are new. I'm Pastor Bell and been uh, honored to be able to serve as the pastor here for 20 years coming in, in June. Praise the Lord. And, and, and every Sunday I'm amazed to see that people still come. If uh, you're wondering uh, about our church, uh, we, we are a family church, and unfortunately my wife had to go home sick this morning, so uh, I know the Lord's going to touch her, but if she can't, doesn't make it to church, you know that she's sick. Right. And so uh, she said, this is the most important Sunday in all the year, and she, tried, she made it to the parking lot, and that was as far as she got. So uh, she sends her love and, and wishes, best wishes to you this morning, but uh, Lifeway Church is an unusual church, uh, for those of you that are new. We are imperfect people serving a perfect God, doing life together, holding one another up, loving one another, just as Christ commanded us to do so. If, you, if you're looking for a perfect church this morning, you, you've come to the wrong place. We serve a perfect God, but by no means is our church perfect. But I'll tell you some things about our church that, that not only I know and see, but Every guest speaker we have, every missionary we have, many of the new people, many of the, the newer folks that have been here uh, just in the last few years have said, I have never seen a more genuine, caring, friendly church in all my life. We had visitors stop by just a couple weeks ago that were on vacation, traveling through, and they stopped and they said, if we lived here, this would be our church. The people are so friendly and loving and it's genuine. And it's why we're not perfect. We are genuine. We're authentic in our, in our successes and in our failures, in our struggles and in our victories. We are in it together through Jesus Christ. And truly, it's the only way to make it in this world is to have a family of God and to be a part of the family of God. Church is being discredited today by many, many people. And, but I tell you this, Jesus is coming back for the church he died and rose again for the church. The church is his idea. And we won't be perfect until he comes and we go and, he cre and everything is all made brand new. But until then, I encourage you, I implore you, when you fail, repent, get back up and get going again. Trust Jesus when you don't understand it. Trust Jesus. The resurrection is, is the most important doctrine that we have in the Christian faith, and it's truth. And, and, you know, some people, after you've been in this, I've been preaching here 20 years, and before that, uh, almost five years prior to that, uh, I, I didn't start out in ministry. I grew up in a ungodly, that's the best way to describe it, ungodly home. And so I'm not coming from a place where I look down at people and I think, oh, if you... I've been there, done that, and I know what Jesus saved me from. My family knows what Jesus saved me from. And I am here today by the goodness of God. I used to be a blasphemer. Now I'm a praiser. I'm a worshiper. I used to be a hater. Now I'm a lover. I used to, to go my own way. I used to be filled with rage and anger. But Jesus came in, and he's still working on me. How many knows with all the construction, that old guy wants to get back out there, but you just have to, to let Jesus keep working on you. You know, I, I thank God I'm not what I was, but I'm not yet what he's wanting me to be. So we're on this journey together. We are seated around the table together. 
We, we are eye to eye, heart to heart. Nobody's looking down on anybody. But we, the church of, of, the, of the end times, the last days, Lifeway Church is doing it Jesus' way. And, and I, will, I will tell you this, it has been my call from God from the very beginning to preach and teach the unadulterated word of God. So if you've come today looking for some watered down, washed down, uh, feel good, just kind of good motivational speech, you know, and, and I don't understand it because I've listened to motivational speakers and there are motivational preachers and there are motivational sermons that, that, that make you feel good. But if that motivation isn't eternally based, based upon the truth, like the resurrection freed me from the fear of death. I used to cry myself to sleep as a four and a five year old every night, afraid I was going to die. I knew I was going to die. At age 15, I got in a car wreck with my brother, 110 miles an hour, got pit maneuvered off of a, with a drunk driver, wrapped our, our car around a telephone pole, flipped it. I died two times on the Lifeline helicopter to Methodist Hospital. It was almost a self-fulfilling prophecy. You think, oh, you turned your life around then, didn't you? No, I didn't. I thought I had cheated death. I thought I'd beat it. I was all the more rebellious and more of a blasphemer because I had beat death. It wasn't till I finally came to a church that I didn't want to go to, blaspheming about it, making fun of the people, sitting in the back row with my arms folded. Oh, I ain't never going to go up. This is ridiculous. I can't wait to get out of here. The preacher started talking about the woes of hell and the glories of heaven. He started talking about the blood of Jesus. And as much as I resisted, before I knew it, I had tears streaming down my once angry, hateful face and found myself at an altar weeping over my sin and shame. And Jesus changed everything for me that day. I'd love to say from that day forward, I was super Christian. I, I, I mean, I was... The, it was the beginning. I was made brand new that day. And I'm, I'm hoping and praying that if you have not accepted Christ's love and his forgiveness, that today you will allow him to make you brand new. And if you have, and maybe you've lost track, or you've allowed things in the cares of this world, or the struggles, or the, 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 the fight to wear you down and keep you from walking in the path that God has destined for you, that today you would allow him to refashion you, to remake you brand new again and set you free. There's no freedom like knowing that if you don't wake up tomorrow, it's all good. With, with all my health struggles I've been going through over, over the past year, I have not had one moment of fear thinking, boy, this could be the end. Not one moment. I, I am not afraid to die. Thank the Lord. I don't, I'm not, I don't want to right now. I mean, I still got a lot of sermons to preach. And so uh, I, I just want to welcome you and, and kind of give you a snapshot. This, it's truly our heart. And there is a place here for you, no matter where you've come from, no matter where you're at today. Understand you are loved and we will help you along that path. With that being said, I, I would be remiss. Uh, there, there's a lot of news going on today uh, about the Transgender Day of Visibility that President Joe Biden has validated and uh, encouraged today. It is coincidence that it falls on Resurrection Sunday because they, somebody deemed it that day on the 31st of March every day for the rest of the year. Now, while it is a coincidence that it has fallen on Resurrection Day today, um, it's not a coincidence that it is a tactic of the enemy to get people's eyes off of Jesus, to fill their hearts with hate, because they're, they're trying to trigger Christians is what they're doing. Because the, and, and, and I can tell you this, from and you're, I'm, I'm going to give it to you like I always have. I'm not going to protect you from your Bibles. I will tell you the truth um, no matter what. But it, I, can, I know that it's an attack from the enemy, and it's meant to trigger Christians because for the first time ever at the White House art contest of Easter egg decorating, they banned any form of religious art on the Easter eggs. If, you, if your kid put a cross on it, they threw it away. If your kid put, praise Jesus, he's ridden, they threw it away. If the kids put a empty tube on there, they, threw, they disqualified them. It could have nothing to do with Jesus Christ 
or the resurrection for the first time ever in history. Yes, they're trying to trigger Christians into being, to be hating, to, to, to be angry, and to, to, to have these feelings of resentment. And we have to watch against that because Jesus said we are to love our enemies, that we're to pray for those who persecute us and despitefully use us. We don't hate any person transgender, no matter what their sexual identity or unidentity or binary, non-binary, whatever. They are a soul that, is, that, that the Lord loves and died for. So we're going to do what the Lord has commanded us to do. I, we're gonna, I'm going to stop right now and we're going to pray for our president. He claims to be Catholic and that is a complete, I'm not Catholic, but I know enough about Catholicism. That is a complete contradictory stance to the Catholic faith. He is deceived, misled, or whatever else, and we need to pray for him. Many of, many of you have people in your families or your friends, your coworkers that are struggling with this whole thing. We need to pray for them and reach out to them. We can do so without condoning them and validating them but we can still love them. And so would you bow your heads with me and let's earnestly pray together for repentance, the salvation of our president and all those who are messed up and mixed up in this deceitful ideology. Father, today we come together with hearts broken. Lord, asking you to help us to overcome any bit of hatred or feelings of anger or resentment, Lord, that would uh, be a stumbling block to our faith in you that would displease you or misrepresent you. God, may our, our, our righteous indignation result in works of faith and fruit of the Holy Spirit. We stand in the gap. We pray for Joe Biden today, Lord, that you would convict him, that your glory would overtake him, that you would help his mind become clear and his heart to be broken for the transgressions and for his sins, Lord, that he would truly come to the saving knowledge of who you are and what you did for him. We pray for our family, our friends, our co-workers, our classmates, our neighbors, all in this nation and around the world who have been deceived or who are bound, who have been uh, misinformed and believed an ideology contrary to your word. Jesus, you died for them. Therefore, we love them and pray for them and reach out to them with the only true hope, only true hope that comes through you. No holiday, no presidential validation, no amount of laws or acknowledgement is ever going to rid their heart and their mind of that which is vexing them. It only comes through the precious blood of Jesus. So we ask you today, Lord, be merciful to them, convict them, and surround them with Christians like of Lifeway that will love them without compromise and speak the truth in love. God, we ask you to save their souls and help use us to do that, to reach them with the gospel. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. And I believe that, I believe that God is working. There are many testimonies now of folks that have come out of that lifestyle and are begging people, don't do it, don't go into it. And... Uh, and I, and I believe God honors our prayers when we pray to get, pray together. Amen? All right. Well, uh, this morning I, I was thinking about the resurrection and how last week we talked about the, the Palm Sunday and Jesus' triumphal entry, how great and awesome it was, and how the cheering stopped. How things can go from wonderful to smoke and ashes in a matter of moments. And I was thinking back, me and, me and my youngest son, Levi, and his friend, we went hiking in the Smoky Mountains about five years ago, and uh, that's when I was like 25. Um, and uh, we, we went to this campsite that I'd been to before, it's Campsite 23. It's the most rugged trail in all the Smoky Mountains. I did it the first time when I was 21. Fast forward 30 years. And so it took me nine hours to cover seven miles. And I tell you, it, it, it was horrific. <laughs> Levi and his buddy had already made it to the campsite. They had set up camp. It was now 11 o'clock, and I was still about a mile away at night, completely pitch black. 
And listen, I'm a man of faith. I'm not scared of anything. But when all you got's a little bitty LED light and it's pitch black, every shadow looks like all the horror movies I should have never seen when I was a kid coming to life. Picked up a stick and I was going to switch it, I mean, you know, whatever it was. But I, I, I admit, I mean, it did. I was, I was, I was unnerved. And while we were hiking and, and through the Smoky Mountains, it was beautiful, it was lush, it was green, but then when you got to a part, everything was just black and charred. Out of this beautiful green mountainside just become a, a, just a, a wasteland. And that was from the 2016 uh, fires that got started by those kids, and it completely charred 17,900 acres. It, you could still, it still smelt like fire. The trees were just twigs, but there was, there was something, if you got close enough, you noticed. Out of the black char and ash and all the trees that had fallen over were little bitty green shoots, some just 12 inches high, starting to come up through those ashes. New life was coming out of that death and destruction. And I couldn't help remember and think about this morning that that morning when, when the ladies went to take care of Jesus' lifeless body, to them everything was ashes. All their dreams, all their hopes was, were, were gone. Their, their Messiah, their King was dead. Their friend was gone. But yet when they got to that empty tomb and the earth quaked and that angel rolled away the stone, through that empty tomb of death came brand new life. Through Jesus Christ. I come this morning with good news. Your life may be surrounded in ashes and debris. You may feel like you're on your last leg. You may feel like nobody cares, nobody knows that you are ruined. You have nothing good going on for you. I come to tell you there is one thing good and his name is Jesus Christ. And up out of your ashes, he can raise you brand new this morning. Yes, amen. If you will put your faith in him, he will make you brand new. And that's the title of this, this, this new series that we're beginning today, A Brand New You. For the next four weeks, we're going to be talking about the brand new you, and that begins with new life today. Next week, I'm going to be talking about the brand new you and how you can get past your past. How many knows Jesus forgives us, but oftentimes we don't forgive us? We carry around guilt and shame, and I, I'm going to go to next Sunday sermon, so i got to stop. But next Sunday, if you're if you having issues getting past your past, or you're having issues with other people getting past your past, I implore you to be here because Jesus Christ can make your past brand new for you, and he wants to. So let's turn in our Bibles to Matthew 28. And verse 1, when you found it, if you could stand... I'll be reading out of the ESV version, English Standard Version today. I love Matthew. It's my favorite gospel. In verse 1, Matthew writes and says, Now after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell the disciples that he has risen from the dead, and behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb, and with fear and great joy, and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. They came up and took a hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there 
they will see me. Father, I thank you today that that tomb is empty. Lord, that you are the keeper of your promises. And Lord, you are, are promising today that if we will call upon you, that you will forgive us if we repent of our sins, that you will make us brand new, that you will set us free indeed. Lord, that you will fill us with your Holy Spirit and give us a brand new life. And Lord, I thank you. I thank you for this, this historical, eternal event that we celebrate today. I thank you, God, that just like you went ahead and you were, were meeting the disciples in Galilee today, your Holy Spirit is here and you long to meet with each and every one of us. I ask you to anoint me as I share your word. Lord, may it build the faith of every person here and those watching online. God, may, may your word and your blood and your love cleanse every sin, calm every fear, and strengthen every heart, I pray today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The Bible tells us that at the dawn, these two Marys went to Jesus' grave. And, and in other Gospels, it says that they had, they had brought uh, ointments and things to prepare his body for death because it was such a quick burial in the way it happened before, before the, the death. Joseph of Ar Arimathea put Jesus in a new shroud and laid him in his new tomb, but they did not have time to properly prepare the body as was custom back in that day. And so as they were making their way to that tomb, imagine it. They were weeping. They were sorrowful. They, they knew what they were going to find. At least they thought they knew. And then there was a great earthquake. And they saw an angel of the Lord sitting on top of the rolled stone. The guards were as though they were dead. And the angel addressed them. The angel named Jesus. He spoke tenderly to them and said, do not be afraid. Jesus, when they come up on Jesus, he said, do not be afraid. That phrase is in the word of God over 365 times. Somebody once said, one, one do not be afraid for every day of the year because we need it. When you're serving Jesus, you do not need to be afraid. The empty tomb is the most powerful doctrine we have. Because other people, good people, have, have died and been martyred. There are more Christians today being martyred than ever before in countries all around the world. Men and women are laying down their lives, kids refusing to denounce the name of Jesus Christ and taking their place, special place in heaven under the altar of those who are slain for the word of God. That's in Revelation See, the first thing that we need to realize is the resurrection crushes our fears. It transforms our fears and offers us brand new hope and joy. It said, as the women went with fear and joy, how many know sometimes you got to move forward in faith despite your fear? And as you do, your faith will begin to transform your fear away from fear and into joy. Once what you were afraid of dying, afraid of crying, afraid of saying, I'm sorry. In Christ Jesus, those fears can be transformed. And there's nothing in the world that brings joy like knowing you are forgiven. Like knowing that you are man or woman enough to say, I'm sorry, I was wrong. Forgive me. We live in a world where we find ourselves filled with so much evil and crime and hatred. Many people today are filled with fear and anxiety, fear of the next COVID thing, fear of a nuclear strike from, from Russia, fear of, you name it, spiders, fear of dark shadows on the mountainside in the middle of the night. It's creepy. Listen, there are so many things to be afraid of, but Jesus come to rescue us from that. People are afraid their marriages aren't going to last. People are afraid, I'm never going to get married. We, we can't get through our struggle. We're never going to have. People are afraid we're never going to fill in the blank. People are afraid of a diagnosis, what the doctor says. Listen, the truth of the resurrection frees every man and woman of God from the fear of the worst diagnosis you can have. Truly, there is no fear in death. That, that fear... The fear of death is, is conquered because Jesus has risen from the grave. Like I started to say, so many other good people, Christian people, have died for 
for the faith. But only one was raised from the dead to never die again. Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. I was talking to somebody this morning about that. I wonder if, you know, Lazarus was, there, there wasn't the heaven like there is now. It was, it was uh, Sheol, and there was Abraham's bosom, which was paradise. And then there was Sheol hell, where all the wicked people went, awaiting for judgment. And so, Abra- I mean, I'm sure that, that Lazarus was with Abraham up in the, the, the paradise of God. And can you imagine when he heard, Lazarus. And I, and I don't know, but I'm just, I just, these, this is how my mind works. I wonder if he said, no, no, no come on. I made it. I wonder if he was a little bit disappointed when he's like, Phew. you know? Who cares? Jesus raised him from the dead, but he died. Jesus raised Jairus' daughter from the dead, but she died. Jesus raised the widow Nain's son from the dead right in the middle of the funeral procession, but he still went on and died. Jesus is the only one who has died, stayed dead for three days, and then rose again, never to die again. He is what the Apostle Paul calls the firstborn from amongst the dead. He is the second Adam. He fulfilled in his life, in the degradation of a sinful world, he lived a sinless life. He did what Adam would not do in a perfect world in the garden of perfection. Jesus made a way where there was no way. So I want to encourage you today, whatever it is that may be vexing you, that you may be anxious about, may be afraid of, I want you to know that Jesus can transform that into joy and turn that into a level of faith in your life. I remember when I got saved, my, my, this is how crazy it was. My mom, and bless her heart, she was going to be here today, but she fell this week. And as all, she didn't break anything, thank the Lord, but she is bruised. Her face, she is just real, real sore. And she lives in Kentucky, so um, hopefully she'll get, get to visit here as soon as she gets feeling better. But, um, and I remember this, and she does too. When I, I come, I said, I said, I got saved. Jesus saved me, and I, I am, I'm brand new. And my mom's first question was this, what devil occult did you adjoin? That, that, that's, that's how drastic of a change Jesus made in my life. She thought I joined an occult. Because the, the, the normal was now abnormal for me. You know, all, all my cousins, they'll still tell you today, everybody had me slotted to be dead by the time I was 21 or locked away for good in prison somewhere. But Jesus changed my life. He made me brand new. I'm the one that messes me up. He's the one that fixes me up. Amen? Amen. This empty tomb means hope for your future. It means hope for your now. It means hope for your past. That it can be wiped away. That is our hope. Jesus is, is the only true way to heaven. The only way true to God the Father. Jesus is the only way. We serve a God that doesn't require us to die for him. But he, knowing that we could never be good enough, made a way and he died for us. Why we were yet in our sins. He loved us anyway and paid the price. The second thing I want to point out is that Christ's resurrection offers a new level of faith, a different kind of faith. You know, we have faith in all kinds of things. You have faith in the pews you're sitting in. I have faith in this chair or we wouldn't be sitting in it. When I woke up this morning, I went and flipped the light switch. I had faith. I know I, I, I need to get Ron Jones to help me out with this. I don't know how all the electricity stuff works or Brian and and the the ampers and volts and, and all that you just don't touch it when it's not when you're when it's not grounded but all I know is I flip the light switch on if my light bulbs not burn out the light comes on I have faith that that's going to happen I had faith this morning when I went and started the car when I turned the key on and the lights came on this car is going to start on the way here you want to talk about crazy faith There's people flying by me doing 90 miles an hour on I-74. I had faith in them. I had faith that they weren't going to sideswipe me, rear-end me, that they weren't going to get in front of me and brake check me. See, everybody has a level of faith in, in the most mundane areas of our life, and sometimes we don't realize it. And for some reason, the hardest thing for people to believe at times is the fact that Jesus Christ is who he said he is. 
He's the son of the living God. He lived a sinless life, was born, born of a virgin. He died for our sins and rose again and ascended into heaven. And he is coming back for those who are serving him and loving him. He is. And those that aren't and refuse him, he will refuse them. That is the, the, the world's truth. That is the, shock, that is the shocking truth that people, well, then if, if he doesn't accept everybody, then I, don't, then I just can't believe in that kind of God. Then you'll never, you will never find peace. Jesus loved us so much that he paid, willingly paid the ultimate price. Just giving us and everybody around us the sheer chance, the possibility that we would say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Every day, uh, an unsaved believer or an unsaved person or a former believer who's, who's turned their back on God, that's the new things. That's the new thing. There, there, was, there was about five years ago uh, a, a trend. There's a, a bunch of the younger generations that are calling themselves the nuns, not the N-U-N-S. Um, that'd be weird, but the N-O-N-E-S, the nuns. We don't, none. We don't affiliate with nothing. Nothing. We have no religion. We, have no, we are nothings. Well, now the new thing, and, and if you look at the numbers statistically, the, the Christians are dwindling fast in America. Now there's the, the whole new section called the Duns, the D-O-N-E-S. Fed up with religion, fed up with church, fed up with God, fed up with this whole, I'm just going to live my life. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to enjoy every moment of it. And, and they're, 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 they are proudly calling themselves the Dun. I'm, dead, I'm done with it all. I'm done with God. He's got no place in my life. Yeah, I believe he's there, but I'm done with him. I pray that all those, both of those groups of people will change their heart and come to the Lord so that the Lord won't be done with them. Jesus said it in Genesis, my spirit will not always strive with man. There, there is coming a day of reckoning. And while we live today, we are in a time of mercy and grace. The time to get in, like Kara said, the time to change is now. Before it's too late. And, and then the enemy will tell you, well, you're not, you're not going to be any different. God can't do that for you. You're too messed up. You're too jacked up. Listen, coming from, from a, a now preacher man who was messed up and jacked up uh, beyond belief, I, I, I won't even I won't go any further than that. That Jesus saved and changed my life completely. And he's still changing me because I, I'm, I can still be a knucklehead. I can. You can ask my wife if she gets back here. I, I, still, I still sin. Oh, you mean you're not like Gandhi? No, nothing like Gandhi. I got hair and Jesus. <laughs> and I got Jesus. Gandhi didn't have Jesus. Paul writes in Romans 10, 8, look at this. But what does it say? The word is near you and in your mouth and in your heart. And then he clarifies, that is the word of faith that we proclaim, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, it doesn't stop there. See, that's the, a lot of people have stopped here today. Oh, I believe Jesus is Lord. Well, are you, are you serving him? Are you going to church? Are you, are you witnessing him? Oh, no, that's not, I don't do that, but I, I believe him. I believe, he, I believe that he's the son of God. I believe that he was a good guy. And yeah, I believe. I confess it with my mouth. But it, it's, 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 it's really a self-deception. And please hear me, and I, I mean this with all love. If you truly confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that he is the son of the living God, that he is the judge, and he is coming back for a day of reckoning, where there will be a judgment that is for every person that has ever lived, and, and everything will be opened up. And if your and my past, our sins, are not under the blood of Jesus, and we are not found in Christ, woe to us that its name's not found and written in the book of life. I see, and it's not, people are shocked, would pastor sin? Yes, but God so loves me that he doesn't kick me out of the family, but he does require me to, to submit to that conviction of the Holy Spirit, to the knowledge of the Word of God, and say, Lord Jesus, I am sorry. Please forgive me. I repent of that. And the Bible says that He absolutely cleanses us, washes away our sins, and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. 
He is still a loving, good God. He doesn't want to send anybody to hell. He doesn't want to strike anybody with judgment. He wants every person who has ever been born and is ever being born to, to receive his love and salvation and to make it to heaven. That's what the Lord wants for you and he wants for me. You know, when you think about faith and, and the new faith that the resurrection offers, there are so many people who have their faith. Buddhism, Buddhists are, are growing because they're, they're, they're the peaceful people. They, they won't even step on an ant or uh, uh, kill a, a bee or a wasp. And I won't kill honeybees uh, in, out of respect for, for Ron and Randy and those who are beekeepers. But, um, listen, you get a Japanese beetle or a big wasp coming at me, I'll pull out every can of hairspray, raid, whatever, bleach, whatever I got, and I will, I will kill those things. People are, are, are all about uh, Islam. And this is, it's, and I know, but there are people converting from Christianity to, to Islam. They want to say that Allah and our Father is the same. They are not. Allah is not our God. The Quran, the Quran testifies against them, at that, uh, against everybody. In the Quran, I believe it's in the third chapter, verse 15 or 14, right around there, it says that Allah is the great deceiver among all. Uh, Allah sows deception and wickedness amongst his people. Does that sound like a loving heavenly Father to you? Allah is not our God. We need to make sure that our faith is made brand new and that it's only Jesus. As we get closer to the end times, and, and, I, and I'm telling you, I, I shared a little bit when I, I got back from uh, rehab and the hospital and all that um, for my inability to walk, for those of you new people here. <laughs> Pastor say, you, you know, no, you know, wasn't that kind of rehab? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> but um, I got I even lost my thought. <laughs> See, what was I saying? <laughs> I'm sorry. In times, thanks, you, Quentin. You're, that's why you're my favorite son-in-law. Uh, you know, I'm going to be preaching some messages that, that it's, it's going to be hard to hear. Things that I've been studying for the past 14 years that, um, you know, uh, I can't even, I, pastors that I've talked to, they say, oh, listen, don't, don't go there. You, all you, got, you just got to give people hope. Just give them hope. Don't, you don't need to talk about those things. You just got to give them hope. Well, what? What, what kind of hope is it, really, if it's not hope at all, as the great deception is at hand? And people are being led astray, and Christians are converting to Islam. And people are becoming nuns and duns, and, and, and people are becoming blasphemous, and our, our government and our nation is crumbling, and there's a satanic agenda everywhere you look, undermining. And Jesus said this is the way it's going to be. He said that in the last days, that if those days had, had not been shortened, that, that no flesh would survive. And even the deception is going to be so great, even so that even if the, the elect, that's you and me, whose name's written in the book of life, would be deceived. I'll encourage you with the truth in that no matter what is coming in 2024, 2025, 2020, 30, 20, whatever, through Jesus Christ, you can do all things that he will save you in and through it. He will bring you through all the way to be with him. To be absent from the body is to be ever present with the Lord. You can't stock up enough. You can't get enough weapons. You can't get enough people. You can't get enough boats. You can't do enough in your flesh to change any of that. What you can do is change your eternity and help change the eternity of those around you. Let the, 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 the truth of the resurrection give you brand new faith in who Jesus is. Let your heart not be afraid. The last point I want to make is this. You have to allow Jesus to take the old and make it new. You know what? Jesus doesn't just slap a coat of paint on it. 
2 Corinthians 5, 17, the Apostle Paul says this, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, is anyone in Christ? Oh, we're going to have a big altar call after service today. <laughs> and, and listen, I'm, and I'm not, if, if you're not in Christ, I'm not making fun of you. Uh, but if you are in Christ, you, you should, not, especially in church, you should not be afraid to say, Amen, thank you, Lord. We're not better than anybody else, but by the blood of Jesus, we're different. Jesus takes the old and makes it brand new. You know, it's like when, when we, we bought our house, we've been there, it's hard to believe now, 10 years. Longest that we've ever lived anywhere. Uh, back, back when we first got married, we'd buy a house, a, a junky house, we would fix it up, live in it for a year, then we'd flip it, sell it, get, get, keep going, flip it, flip it. Um, but this house, we've lived in it for 10 years, but when we got there, it was a repo. Uh, since then, we've cut down uh, over 110 trees, and I think uh, Brother Ralph's cut about 50 of those, <laughs> helped me drop those. But uh, when we got there, the, the, it, was, it was a mess. We went to the bathroom, and it has still had the old cast iron tub, which was great for tornadoes. Right? And everybody knows that if you don't have a cast iron tub, and you don't have a basement, you go into the crawl space when there's a tornado. Anybody else heard that? Oh my, where am I? I guess that's just the hillbilly people I grew up with. But uh, anyway, we went to the bathroom and the tiles were falling off the walls. It was just horrible. And so we wanted to put a, a new toilet in, a new vanity, a new tub, uh, put paint on it. But you know what? If we would have just painted the walls, polished the sink and the tub, that, that would have been such a waste because the floor was rotting. The walls were, 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 had mold and mildew in them. And when we started to pull the tile off, when we pulled out the cast iron tub, the chipmunks had put their winter stash in there. The walls were filled with hickory nuts and walnuts. I kid you not. A couple bushel bags. I mean, it was everywhere. I mean, it was bad. It was, Jesus does that with our life. He takes the sin. He takes the hatred. He takes what we've done wrong and what people's done wrong to us and he removes it and he makes it brand new. Amen. He takes what was meant for our death and our destruction. What the enemy loves to do is to kill, steal, and destroy. And he puts a, a, a barrier between us and the enemy and he begins to restore us and make us brand new. Through Christ. And it is, people say, that's just too easy. I'm supposed to just... I believe who Jesus is. I'm just supposed to say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I confess them all to you, and I commit to serve you with all I've done and all I've been and all I haven't done, and Jesus will write my name in the book of life, and then if I, if I continue to follow him and I, I get baptized in water and I, I, I start coming to church and I, I start following Jesus, you mean that's, all, that's that easy? It is that easy. It is that easy. Jesus made it that easy. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, turn from your sins and follow Jesus, he will make you brand new. The resurrection is proof of God's power. The resurrection is the proof that Jesus is who he said he is, that he is the one true God who came to save his creation, to redeem them. And such are some of us today. And so I want to ask you today, has Jesus redeemed your life? Have you put your faith totally in him? And see, you don't need to understand everything. You don't have, you, you can't be perfect and come to him. Nobody's perfect. Don't, Jesus was the only perfect person to ever walk this earth besides Adam and Eve, and they blew it. So if you would bow your heads with me, we're going to, end today with celebrating the Lord's death through communion. But before we do, we need to examine our hearts. And I sense, I sense the, the, the heavy presence of the Holy Spirit here today. I know there are folks here, and, and not because somebody told me, but just, just by what the Lord's putting in my heart that you live a life of fear. 
You're afraid of everything. You, you are afraid. And the Lord wants to deliver you from that. He wants to turn your fear into confidence in who you are in Him. If there's anyone here today that you have not placed your trust in Christ, I urge you, I beg you, put your trust in the Lord today. He will accept you. He will make you brand new. And He has brought you to a place of imperfect people who will help you on your path as we walk out this, this life of faith until we all come to be with Jesus forever. If you're here today and you'd say, Pastor, I have not placed my trust in the Lord. Maybe I, I've, I've confessed and I believe that he's the son of God, but that, that's been it. I truly have not let him change my heart. I haven't repented. But today I, I want to make that commitment. Today I want my spiritually blind eyes to be open. I want my spiritually dead body to be raised to life brand new today. I want to have freedom in Jesus Christ. I want to have a guilt-free conscience. I want to live the life that Jesus paid the price for me to have. If that's you, would you just slip up your hand where you're at? So when I pray, I want to, I want to remember you and pray for you. You say, Lord, I, I don't know what tomorrow brings, but I want to give you my life. I want you to forgive me of my sins. If that's you today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I tell you, I, I know, I just sense maybe someone or, or so maybe somebody watching online. The Holy Spirit is, you, you feel this overwhelm, you, it feels like anxiety, but it's not. That's the quickening of the Holy Spirit. And you're saying to yourself, if I can just get out of here without raising my hands, without praying, if I can just hurry up and slip out of here, I, I, it'll be fine. I'll, I'll feel better. You won't. You've heard the truth. You've felt the presence of God that is moving upon your heart. And that is his love beckon, beckoning you to trust fully in him. I'll give you one more chance. If that's you, would you slip up your hand and say, Pastor, pray for me. God bless you, sir. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you, man. Thank you. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. One brave man and one brave woman. Is there anyone else? Those of you that are, are online watching. It may, it may feel weird, but I, I, if you're alone in your living room, I ask you to raise your hand. Let the Lord see it. That's what matters. It's a step of faith. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now those, both of you that raised your hand, we're going to pray with you. We've all been where you, where you are. There may be some that's where you're at now. And maybe you're, you don't think you're ready to give your life to Christ. You are. And, and I'm praying and believing over you, if, if that's any of you or those of you online, that the Lord is going to continue to draw you and that there's going to be the day coming soon where you raise your hand to the Lord and you confess your sins and Christ comes in and makes you brand new. We're going to baptize you right here in the sanctuary. We're going to help you. You're going to become a part of this family. There's a place here for you. Would you pray with me as my brother and sister pray right now? Heavenly Father, we believe you sent your son Jesus and he is the only way to heaven. He is the, my Savior and my Lord. I confess every sin, every transgression, and I ask for your forgiveness. And I forgive all those who have sinned against me. 
I ask you to make me brand new, Lord. And I commit from this day forward to serve you, to follow you, and to love others as you have loved me. If I fall, I will get back up. I love you, Jesus. You are my Savior, and you are my Lord. Thank you for writing my name in the book of life. I am saved in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. Can you give the Lord a thunderous applause? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I tell you, my, my brother and my sister, you'll never regret it. I'd like to talk to you for just a quick moment. Um, after service up front here, i got something I want to give you. Um, praise the Lord. Uh, heaven has been fortified. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. There's nothing better than when a brother or sister comes into the family of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. So with, with that, we're going to now celebrate the Lord's death through communion. Uh, the ushers have extra communion. It, you should have it when you got in, but if you don't have it for some reason, can you just raise up your hand and the ushers will bring you a communion. Anybody? Back here in the back. Just keep it up. They'll, they'll find you. Praise the Lord. What a great day. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, ushers. The night Jesus was betrayed, it was a Passover. That, 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 that holiday, that act of faith was, was instituted with Moses right before they were delivered out of Egypt and out of slavery. It was, so, it was representation, representational perfect of Jesus' death on the cross as the Lamb of God. Jesus knew what he was doing. He took the bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body that is broken for you. What he was saying is, you're no longer going to kill a lamb and cook it and follow the rituals and, and, and do what Moses taught you to do. That part is over. What he was saying without saying it was, I am the Lamb of God. My body's going to be broken for you. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until I return. So he blessed the bread, he broke it. Lord, we thank you for your body that was broken for ours. We thank you, Lord, that our chastisement of our peace was upon you. The weight of our sin and shame was upon you. Your body was stricken and beaten beyond recognition to pay the price for our sins. Lord, it is with a truly worshipful heart and a grateful heart that we thank you for your death and resurrection today. In Jesus' name, let's take the bread together. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Afterward, he took the cup. And he said, this is my blood, the blood of the new covenant. What he was saying was that the sacrifices of the temple, will be, they're over, they're going to be done, no more. Or they, they're not supposed to be. And as we learned on Wednesday night in the teaching... It was so prophetic the way that Jesus, when he was hung on the cross from the, from the third to the ninth hour and the sacrifices of the temple, that literally the moment the shofar blew for the afternoon sacrifice, Jesus cried out, it is finished. And he gave up his life. The ultimate sacrifice for you and me. The blood of Jesus is still as powerful today as it was then. The blood of Jesus heals our diseases, heals our sickness, cleanses us of our sins. The blood of Jesus paves the path for our eternity together with him. So, Lord, together, 
as, as one body, Lord, as your church, we had come together today and we thank you for the blood, the precious blood of Jesus. We thank you for forgiving our sins. We thank you for healing us. God, we thank you for making a way where there was no way. Lord, we do not take for granted for one second what you've done for us. And it is with a worshipful heart and a grateful heart that we thank you for the blood. Let's take the cup together. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. If you would, just stand to your feet and just begin to thank the Lord for all that he's done and all that he's doing. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God, I thank you. Thank you for your saving grace. God, I thank you for your mercy and your patience. Lord, I thank you for second chances and 50 chances and 100 chances. Lord, I thank you for every person that is here today. God, I count it a privilege and an honor to have been able to spend this time honoring you with my brothers and sisters and with my future brothers and sisters. God, I, I ask for you to bless them, Lord, that you would go before them. Lord, that you would go beside them and be their rear guard. And Lord, as each one leaves this house of worship today, God, I pray that you would protect them from the wicked one, that you would bless them, Lord, with everything that they need and more. Lord, I pray that you would withhold no good thing from them as they seek to serve you. Lord, and I pray against every attack of the enemy that would be set out against them this week. And for Lord, if there's anyone here today that was not able to call upon you for salvation, Lord, I pray that, that the night when they go home, they would sense your love and your Holy Spirit in such a powerful way that this still would be the day that they make you Savior and Lord and you make them brand new. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 God bless you all. Thank you for coming today and I hope to see you on Wednesday. Have a great Resurrection Day.